Welcome everybody to Drummy Edge. I'm here with Stephen Taylor. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Taylor. Now you guys Good might know Stephen Taylor already. He <coughs> is obviously a drummer, um, an instructor here with us satellite yeah. uh, on Drumio. You've been with us now for three years. Yeah, we were, I was looking at it the other day, three years, which is yeah. an extremely long time to know you, Dave. That's a long time Even to know Even if it's just digitally, that's a really long time to know Dave. You know, we've been talking on Skype, phones, on emails, working yeah. on lessons for three years. This is the first time we've actually met each other in person. It is. So it is. it's really good to see you. You too, man. Welcome to your second home. Can you call this your second home? <laughs> I can call it my second. Even though it's Canada, I'll still call it you my call, second. Still I call still it. will do it. That's right. <laughs> uh, so you guys, Stephen's got about probably 50 to 100 lessons already on Drumio, but mm -hmm. he also has his own website, Stephen's Drum Shed. Uh, you can check it out. He's got tons of lessons on there. He kind of is a, a similar thing to what we do, but it's more, um, it's it's you. It's, it's Yeah, it's me. If you, if you don't like me, you'll hate my, you will hate my website. <laughs> and if you like <laughs> really it, you're going to love your, his site. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. Cool play along too that you gave us there. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, uh, me and a buddy of mine um, came up with that. He was in the group I was on Universal Records with, Lovers and Liars, way a few years ago. It was a few years back now. Nice. Um, and, uh, and yeah, me and him still play together, and you know we've been throwing some ideas around. I said, hey, let's get a track together to take up there. So That's very cool. So I can jam. That's very cool. You can so, get yeah. that. Can you get it on your website as well? Uh, no, but we're going to include it yes. with this. You guys can get this. If you were a Drummy Wedge member, you'll have access to that, uh, that song. I also want to introduce you to two of our VIP members here. This is Bob Tebby to the uh, far left, and then we have Paul here. And they're both out for a VIP week. This is VIP 2 for all of you guys. And um, how are you enjoying it so far? Great so far, yeah. Yeah. but it's only Monday. It's only day one, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm glad you can join us on the lesson. They're gonna hang out with us. If you guys have questions for Steven along the way, get them in. Totally. Cool. Yeah, man. Yeah. And um, you brought some cool symbols. Zildjian, you're a Zildjian player, a I am. Player. I am a Zildjian player. I am a uh, Zildjian and Vic Firth guy. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, I, you know, if people wanna know about the sizes, I do those later, but uh, yes. but yeah, the only thing I get asked about all the time is the hi-hat, so yes. it's an EFX crash symbol that I use as a hi-hat. So. Very cool. Um, but yeah, a Tama, Zildjian, Vic Firth, Aquarian drum heads, yeah. all clear in-ears, drum tacks, true tuner, and drum dial. We'll mitch them all, so they're all great people and have uh, been very good to me. Awesome. So. So follow Steven Taylor online. You can find him on Facebook. You can go to his website, Steven's Drum Shed. And if you guys are watching this for the first time and you like his style, he's a local, regular, local, a regular teacher, satellite. <laughs> I wish you were local. I'm, I'm in Nashville. If you're in the Nashville area, in Nashville. I'm totally local. But he's got tons of lessons on Drumio. And today's lesson's on drum fills. Drum fills, yeah. So my background um, comes from... Uh, playing live. I got my first, uh, actually Henrik was here last week, mm -hmm. and Henrik gave me my first gig. He taught me when I was, uh, four, four, started when I was 15. And um, yeah, so he gave me my first gig, and then from there I started gigging full time when I was 19 on Bourbon Street, New Orleans. And so I come, a lot of drum teachers, um, oh, I just really love teaching, and I, you know, I do that over playing, and I'm a player at heart. I love teaching too, mm -hmm. but I'll never stop playing. Mm -hmm. And so I come from a, from a background of wanting to be able to play for the gig, having my practice time and some fun things that I do there, but also knowing that on the gig, there are things that I have to do. Mm -hmm. There's things, there's pressure, pressure situations. For instance, I did a showcase um, last year, and walked up, there were gonna be eight different artists. We had no rehearsal. Mm -hmm. All charts, I had a band I'd never met till I walked up for sound check. And then we have to go through 15 songs with these artists. We get like one minute of each artist coming up and sound checking and they're running through. Yeah. So at that point, am I gonna pull out some fill that I've been working on and probably not, to be honest with you? <laughs> because in the working world, you have to have some things that you can go to, like what we're gonna talk about, several of these fills that I know work, especially when I'm nervous and I'm trying to communicate with guys that I've never communicated with. I know there's a language that I can speak with them that they're gonna hear and they're gonna go, we're going to the chorus, mm -hmm. or oh, he's cueing this, or oh, so um, part of this, we're calling it 10 drum fills, every drummer should know, or something along yep. those lines, yep. 10 must know drum fills. But it's not just 10 must know drum fills. It, these, are, these are fills that will help you when you get into a situation where it's a pressure cooker, or another one that I did uh, from Vegas, they came in, it was a, it was a Rat Pack review, 15 section mm -hmm. big band. I went and we had 15 songs, Four of the songs had tracks that they didn't send me with a click, and all of those had time changes in them. Mm. 
and I'm sight reading live with a big band, and I'm supposed to come up with, no, at that point, creativity is usually out the door, and you are hanging on by the seat of your pants. Yep. And it's a good experience, but in any gigging situation, we need to have some things that we can go to, and several of these fills, you can hear them across Motown, you can hear them across popular uh, music on the radio, you'll hear these fills uh, because they're part of our language. And so don't just think of this as like 10 catchy fills. This is just part of the language of drumming. And, uh, and to me, these are 10 fills that have helped me over, over the past few years. Love it. So, yeah, man. I love how you're not just teaching one fill, you're teaching variations of them and the yeah. feels to them. Download the PDFs, guys. Follow along with them. We are <coughs> going to do questions at the end. If you do have questions, get them in now. We don't have time for all of them, but we'll do as much as we can. Um, and that being said, man, take it away. Yeah, man, we'll take it away. So the first one, some of these you might go, oh, I already know that one. Just listen because you may you may learn something new uh, and maybe you don't know them. So the first one that we're going to be talking about is uh, the eighth note the eighth note build. And this is like, I teach this to every student as soon as they come in. You know, after they learn this fill, I teach them this, this fill that's coming up here, the eighth note build. <laughs> okay, so the eighth note build just simply to me indicates we're going to another section. So you have two ways that I play it. Uh, eighth notes on the floor tom and the snare drum. So they count that, it's gonna go one and two and three and four and. And I'll put my kick drum on quarter notes. That's the first way. So we got this. Three and four and. So that's going to be the first way that I would do that. Now, let's talk about shaping the fill. Not, not too often we talk about shaping the fill. You can't just sit there and. Right? To me, that doesn't sound musical. So let's talk about shaping the fill. What if we started, we have this crescendo that goes in the next section. So. Instead of. See, we've hit our ceiling there. We don't have anywhere to go from there. If we start here, we can't go anywhere, but maybe just a little bit further up here, you yeah, know? Yeah. But if we start low and we build that tension and shape it, the other ways are real simple. We can do a, um, a simple eighth note build with the kick drum. So now everything's building that eighth note. This is, I especially like building with the kick drum on ballads, gives it that real fat sound. So if we're here, you know, three, four. So it just kind of helps launch you in to that new section. Okay, so that's the first, to me, a must know fill. I'm gonna teach any beginner that walks through the door. That's gonna, we're gonna talk about shaping the fill, we're gonna talk about moving, uh, movement in the song and how, how that's gonna help transition. Something we don't often think about is how the crowd is, is visualizing that. Mm -hmm. So if you have like a sing-along situation where you're in a concert and people are singing along with you, you can actually trigger them to go to another section by accident, by playing a, what I call a leading fill. Mm. Okay, yeah. so a fill that's like that, and then you go back into the verse. And people are going, what? you know, because they're accustomed to hearing a build going to another section. Yeah. So using these things is also, using these tools are also ways to cue the other band members, to cue singers. If I see that a singer's lost, maybe they don't know we're coming out of a solo section, I can use a simple cue like this to help the cohesiveness in the band. Yes. Um, so that's going to be our first fill. All that's right, a great. So. That's a great tip to, too. Is is playing the fill for the other bands too, not just or band band members, not just yourself. Because sometimes if you have an idea, they might you might lose them. This is a yeah. very stock. This is what's happening, and you can either bring it up or bring it down. Yeah. Yeah. There's that. and there's situations for everything. A lot of a lot of guys don't want to babysit the band. I don't consider it babysitting the band. Mm -hmm. I think that when you're in a situation where somebody you see is having, they're struggling or maybe they don't know where they are, it's no big deal to cue them. You know, if you're in this progressive progressive, you know, jazz situation, then the players are gonna be on a level where you, do, you don't need to do that, mm -hmm. okay? But if we're talking about a situation like this, big stages or a small stage and we're needing to keep the band together, that's, you know, these are definitely ways to do that. So, um, so this, the second fill we got here is, is also uh, the 2A that we have here is going to be a simple fill, and I call it the splat boom, okay? I, I believe strongly in mnemonic devices. That's anything that helps you remember something. And so I can bring an eight-year-old in here, and I can teach him splat boom, or her, 
and they're gonna remember it mm -hmm. because it's splat, boom, splat, boom. Mm -hmm. So that's, it's, it's simply a flam. A flam constitutes two notes. One of them is a grace note. It's not quite as loud as the other one. And it's attached to the primary note. So it's gonna sound like this. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna put that on the downbeat and on the upbeats, we're gonna put the kick drum. So it's gonna go splat, boom. The way we're gonna count this is one and two and three and four and. So if my tempo's here, three and four and Okay, that's gonna, now, and, and there's another, I've, I've notated on here, it's the intro to Teen Spirit, and it's the splat boom fill, and all he does is make it double time, okay? He replaces one of them with, a, with an eighth note here on the hi-hat, uh, and so it, it sounds like this if we slow it down. It's that, that, it's that, I hear that fill and still I'm like, yes! Yeah, like yeah. I see the music video, everything. But that's simply the splat boom. And I think it's a genius use of that. So you can find different uses for these. Uh, you don't just have to keep them into the. Right? Maybe I'm playing this. So we don't necessarily have to keep them in the format that they're notated here. Play outside of the box, and that's why we're given some variations of this. So uh, this, that's another fill that I've used a lot in my gigging career. All of these come, they're not like, I wasn't sitting in a room and was like, ooh, this would be a really good one. These are fills that I actually use. I mean, I actually use these in real time to, to, to aid my own playing, okay? So, uh, so number three. Number three is, uh, is another one, and it's short and it's simple. You'll hear it a lot, and, it, and I almost didn't put it in there, but it, 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 it's something I use all the time. Uh, and all it is is on four, it's the last two sixteenth notes, and I call it, I call it the, uh, Debbie, the Debbie. Because in a second, we're gonna look at the infamous Pat Boone, Debbie Boone fill that everybody should know. Well, the Debbie part is Debbie. So when you're playing, just think one, two, three, Four, Debbie. <laughs> See, you already know it. You already know the fill. It's, yeah. it's mnemonic <laughs> devices work. That's why we use them. Plus, it's a big word. And when I use big words, I feel like people think I'm smarter. When I use, um, <laughs> do I look we're, more distinguished? We're when smarter I than that, Stephen. <laughs> when, when I when I do this, I always feel like too like I'm I, I look a little bit more intelligent than just normal guys. <laughs> All right, so if we play this, the count for this is going to be on four. It's going to be four e and a. Uh. I'm gonna play it on my snare drum. So here we go. Three. Now, the great thing about this fill is this is not what I would call a leading fill. So a leading fill is gonna lead the listener's ear somewhere else. You're helping to lead them. It's almost like a, um, a phrase ender when you're reading a, a good book. Yeah. And they leave you on this cliffhanger, and you're like, oh man, I can't wait for the next chapter. Or, or Breaking Bad used to do that with every episode. Um, <laughs> it's like, I gotta wait for the next one. They were the worst, <laughs> but the best at the same time. <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. And, uh, and so instead of having this big fill, this is more of what I would call a little interruption okay. or a hiccup. And so if I'm playing through the verse and I play that fill, it's short enough that the listener's not gonna think I'm going to another section. Mm -hmm. I can continue on with that section and, and it's gonna be just fine. So that or would be an example a, of a non-leading fill. Or if you're playing a song and you realize they're changing and you gotta, you gotta fit a fill in there, it's like, oh, they're, they're, they're moving, they're moving. Yeah. I'll throw in Debbie right there. Exactly, uh, it's a very short fill. Debbie yeah. works every time. She's a hard worker. She's, she's <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave the Debbie jokes for another yeah, time. All I right, so, so the next fill we have is uh, is gonna be the infamous, everyone knows this. The sticking is just, that's just the notated sticking. You can play it right, left, it's not gonna be wrong. It's the Pat Boone, Debbie Boone. And as soon as I play it, you will always and forever. This is one of those that you'll be in the studio and they'll come over the talk back and they'll go, could you just throw a Pat Boone, Debbie Boone there? And, and you know, it's like, okay, well, I guess you tell me how to do my job now. And uh, <laughs> No, so this is gonna be the Pat Boone, it's gonna, uh, Debbie Boone, it's gonna be three, and, so three on the snare drum and on the high tom, and then on the snare drum, we're gonna have four E and then and again on the, on the high. So, excuse me, let me, I, 
I'm gonna hit the drum this time. Yeah, the one. Yeah, the... Pat Boone, Debbie Boone. Everybody knows this, Phil. You gotta know it. It's a it's a great thing to stick in there if you're playing a pop country gig, a pop gig. It works every time. Now, the Pat Boone, Debbie Boone. This is gonna if you throw number five up there for me. Um, number A. Five, number five A. Yeah. a. So the Pat Boone, Debbie Boone leads me into another fill that you should know in all of its variations, and that's gonna be what we call the Motown fill. Um, there's several variations of it depending on if Richard Pistol Allen played it or Uriel Jones or Benny Benjamin. Benny Benjamin is really credited with having come up with most of the versions. Um, but you can actually usually tell which song each drummer's playing on depending which fill they're using because each of them used one of the fills more than they used the other ones, which is kind of cool to me that you know they all came up with their own variation of this, which is what I want you to do with this. Don't, don't go, oh, Steven said that I'm supposed to, play. I can't play it any other way. It's always Pat Boone, Debbie Boone. I don't care. You can throw their uncle in there too. Like whatever you want to do that <laughs> makes, it, makes you happy. Um, so with this one, with the Motown fill, you can hear this exact fill on the song My Girl. There's several variations of this fill. We're gonna start on the high time. It's still gonna be a two beat fill. And what it's gonna, we're, the way we're gonna count it is it's gonna be three E and, and the uh is gonna come here on the snare drum. The four is gonna come on the snare drum and the and is gonna go on the floor tom. So three E and a four and. Th Just playing that fill, if you play that in a Motown song, I played this one time. I used yeah. to play with a, uh, I loved him to death. He was, man, he was country as dirt, man. And he was this <laughs> amazing bass player. Man, he talked, man, he talked like this, man. <laughs> the first time I met him was in a jazz combo. Yeah. And he opened, like, he was doing this amazing bass part and he opened his mouth and I'm like, wow, it does, doesn't, these two things don't go together. <laughs> um, and so, uh, he was the one, we were on a gig, and I played that fill, and he turns around, and he starts screaming and pointing at me. He's like, I've been waiting for that fill, that's the fill. He said, the other drummer I've been playing with, I've been trying to get him to do that fill. But it's, it's the Motown fill, and it really does signify that whole style of drumming uh, and popular music. So if you'll put the next version of that up there, uh, the next version, is going to be, we're gonna put a six stroke roll with this. We're gonna put uh -huh. our rudiments in there. It's gonna be the exact same sticking, but now we're gonna fill in the 16th notes. Mm -hmm. I'll play it first without the roll, so you can see what I call the skeleton. The skeleton is gonna be just the, the, the syncopated outline of what's happening. And so if we look at that beat three, it's gonna go three E and a four and. High time's gonna be in the same place on the downbeat of three and the and of four. Okay, so very slowly, one, And I would even accent the uh of three and the downbeat of four. So add some shape to this, some articulation. Now, if we throw the six stroke roll in there, all we're gonna do is diddle in the middle. I've been waiting the entire lesson to use that rhyme. <laughs> I'm done, I'm done teaching. See you later, Diddle buddy. in the middle. I'm done, diddle in the Boom. middle. Boom. <laughs> so you're gonna throw that into the middle of this. So instead of this, So I take that, and, and again, that's another Benny Benjamin fill. Yep. Now, if, uh, if we're going to the next one, what's the next one we have, Dave? That's C. the uh, C we have there. It's gonna be another version of this, and it's gonna be a simple variation. But see, the reason I'm using these variations is just to show you. Just because it's like top 10 fills, no, there's so many other things we can do this. And you'll hear this fill this way. So now we're gonna add an extra note on beat four. Instead of just playing the downbeat of four, we're gonna play the E of four now. So now it's gonna go three E and a four E and. But we're still gonna put the diddle in the middle. Yes, I fit that in there twice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so one and two and One and two and 
and okay to play it with a with a groove okay so again a very applicable fill now i talked about there were different drum there were really three drummers that were significant in the motown era and that was as i said before benny benjamin uriel jones and richard pistol allen okay yeah so if we're looking at the next one, uh, what we have up there, that's gonna be 5D, I do believe. And- uh, That's right. We, we've got Uriel Jones style, sorry. Yes. Uh, so we're gonna do this Uriel Jones style. And he simply plays it here on the snare drum. If you hear him play it, this would be how Uriel would play it. He's gonna play exactly how we played the original fill, but he's gonna put in that E of four, and he's not gonna play the top tom here. Oh. So it's gonna go three E and a four E and. So. So that's gonna be another variation of that, that if you were to hear Uriel Jones, he would play like that. And the next one that we have there, which is gonna be 5E, is Richard how, say, Pistol Allen, yeah, yeah, Richard Pistol Allen. That's, this is how he would play uh, that particular fill. Now, obviously, they all played them all ways, but they had, you always have your go-to fill, like the fills that you all, and these were some of those if they were put in the same situation. Yeah. Now, something that they didn't do that we do now is we crash on the downbeat. A lot of times you would hear them in Motown because of the way they recorded music back then. Uh, they'd have all the isolation we have and the ability to isolate each microphone and gate it. And I mean, yeah. this was, you know, this was the days when they were really developing that, um, our modern day, you know, standard for recording. And so when they were doing, a lot of times they couldn't put that a loud crash in there. So you'd hear them do the fill and end it on the hi-hat or with a hi-hat lift. Uh, so if we're gonna do it Pistol Allen style, you'd start on the and of three and then play the four E and now the and is gonna come on the high tom. Okay. It seems like a small difference, but it's small enough and a different drummer played it. So it would go one and two and three. And then he usually wouldn't crash, so it'd be three. All of those have saved me countless times. Yeah. <laughs> countless times when I'm going, oh no, I'm in the chart and we're going to another section. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just a real short uh, three, you know, three eighth note fill or two beats at the most and you're into the next section. So wow. uh, so that's gonna be kind of the Motown section of these fills. Are we, are we doing good? Do we need to get to any questions? Are doing we good, get those? no, no, we can get the questions at the end. So far so good. Awesome, awesome. We're on number six and this is one of my favorites, the I got a pee fill. <laughs> <laughs> What does this even mean, man? It, it, it's see, I'm gonna leave you to wonder about that, Dave. You're until not even until I come see you again, Dave's gonna be wondering like <laughs> up at late at night. What does it all mean? I gotta how, pee. How did you get that? So this is this is the exact last fill that we did. It's just taking that and putting it in a different context. I've heard it in this context several times, not on Motown, but in several times I I use it in this way, especially when I don't want to end the section with a crash, or I want to do a fill. Um, within a verse or within a chorus and not lead the listener somewhere. This is a very good way to do that. And the only reason I called it that, I'm gonna go ahead and let Dave out of his cage of emotion. Thank you, you know. thank you. <laughs> Why is it called this? <laughs> it's, it's because you remember it. That's it. That's, it's a mnemonic device. That's right. Like when I tell an eight-year-old, I gotta pee. Uh, you know, like I tell my kids, I've got an eight-year-old home. Right. If I tell him, I'm like, this is the I gotta pee fill, He's gonna, he will never forget it and he will play it for all of his friends. Okay, that's so it's, that's all we're doing here. So the I got a P fill is simply high tom here on the and of four, uh, excuse me, the and of three. three yeah. So three and, and then four E and on the hi hat. So one and two and three. I gotta pee. That's it. I got it now. See? That's why, Dave. It all makes sense, man. Well, here's the deal. I'm really deep. You know, like we want to go meta. We want to go that next level. We want to go meta. That's you know, awesome. like there's there's Dave and then there's me. And uh and maybe even a little deeper is <laughs> 
that even mean? I don't even know what that means. Uh, <laughs> but now you know what the fill means, so. Yeah, man, I gotta pee. Uh, I like it. I, I, I dig it. Do you really, or do we need to break the lesson? Or? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Talking about the fill. I've had that happen before, though. Really? Hey, you gotta make it out. You're live for an hour. You gotta take care of things, man. You know, when you got to, you got to. You gotta it's, do what you gotta do. It's part of the dangers. Wow. Um, number seven. Please. Number seven. <laughs> so, moving the lesson along. <laughs> <from laughs> urination. <laughs> uh, so, the next fill we got is on. Uh, uh, it's it's what I would call a pop country feel. The reason I call it that is because that's the first place I saw it. And I'm, I forget, I think I was at my uncle's house. And I'm always collecting fills like this that just make, like when I hear them and I go, man, that's just a really good transition. That's I'll stick that in my back pocket. It doesn't have to be fancy. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to amaze me because the working side of me goes, man, the next time I'm in, you know, and for instance in Nashville, they have different levels of sessions that you do. And if you're doing, uh, if, you're, if you're cutting a demo session, yeah. chances are that demo is gonna be heard by a label or it's going, if you're a songwriter, they're cutting their demo, it's gonna be heard by a bunch of artists, mm-hmm. then they'll pick it and it'll be re-recorded several times before it ever makes the album cut. So when you go into a session like that, you've got a three or four hour session, they'll give you sometimes eight, 10 songs and we're gonna go through them, we're gonna knock these out, you know? Yeah. And you're, it's your job to go in there and do that in a professional manner. And so to do that, I'm always collecting fills like this that just work for given styles. Uh, so this is what I call a pop country fill. I think I was at my uncle's and, and his son was watching TV and, uh, or my nephew and, um, and uh, Whenever, I think it was a, no, it's a Keith Urban song that came on, matter of fact. And the fill was simply four E and. So almost what we were just doing, just shortened and put on the time. So it goes like this. Three and. One, two, three, two. I mean, that's like a song opener right there. Three, uh, excuse me. One, two, three. It works very well. Yeah. A lot of these fills, when I was um, in New Orleans, uh, the bands we were on, we, we ran them. They didn't want the music to stop. So a lot of times the drummer did the transition. Mm-hmm. We actually came up with certain fills to start certain songs. You know, forever and ever, this will always... That will always mean we're going into celebration. Or... That was Soul Man. Gotcha. So forever and ever, those fills meant something to me, and we were able to cue the band without counting them in. They knew when they heard that fill, it was we were into the song. And so you can use these as song intros as well if you're needing to count the band in. So yeah, love it, man. Yeah. Um, number eight we have here, and this one is going to be uh, another one of the more infamous fills that we have. Uh, and it is simply going to be the bucket of fish. Bucket of fish. We don't want to call it the bucket of fish because that's not part of the mnemonic device. Yeah. It's just bucket of fish. Now, I've got several ways we can do this, and you may be looking at it right now and going, that's not bucket of fish. Bucket of fish is simply right, left, right, kick. There are other ways that we can play it, and there's other ways we can place it on the kit. But in its simplest form, it's bucket of fish. Mm-hmm. A lot of ways you hear it is bucket of fish. So something like this. But the way I have it written right there is great for use on a ballad. Oh, so, okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. I never thought about that one. But we can't, I, I thought about including that as a separate fill, but you really can't because it's the same sticking. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we just think about that a little bit, and we twist it around, let's take that same fill and let's put it in 16th notes, okay? So now we have the same sticking, but it's gonna go three E and a four E and a one. Another way that we can do it is simply put it here, and this is getting closer to what the, the bucket of fish fill really is, and that's just going down the tom. So it'd go one, and you'll do that with every beat. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and so. I 
think the first person that I saw use this bill in a 16th note context uh, was Raymond Weber when I was down in New Orleans. Um, I, was, I was only like 19. So I wasn't old enough to actually go in the clubs when I wasn't working. Ah, uh, yes. But Raymond Weber, who has played with a ton of New Orleans greats and a ton of other people, um, just a fantastic drummer. He played and he had a, he had a window uh, behind his drum kit where he played and it was an open window. So on my breaks, I would walk down and I would stand mm -hmm. and drink my Diet Coke, you know, because I'm 19. And so I'm like drinking my Diet Coke, watching Raymond play huh. and, and learning how he would transition the songs, how he would count these. I mean, I learned a lot from watching him. And I think he was the first one I saw do something like that. It was like. They just counted them off, and they all knew when he played that fill, like, we're gone. Yeah. Like it's, it's, the train's leaving the station. Yeah. So uh, so that's one way to play Bucket of Fish, all right? So put the next, if you'll put the next one up there, this is going to be 8C. This will be a more traditional way that you'll hear Bucket of Fish. So we take and we divide that eighth note. With the first eighth note, we're going to make it an eighth note triplets, if you want to, or sextuplets. So sextuplets, gonna, it's, it's in the name. There's going to be six notes to every quarter note. So if our quarter note is here... So there's three of those nerds, notes, nerds, <laughs> three of those nerds, <laughs> three of those notes per eighth note, okay, or six per quarter note. Okay, so when we take and we put that into context, we can now play those three notes and then play the kick drum after that. So if we're here, one and two and. Now let's put that on the drum set, and a typical way that you'll hear that is snare, what I just played, just faster. So snare, high tom, floor tom, kick drum. So three and four and. Super useful whenever you're playing. You'll also hear it played um, maybe uh, on a dotted ty a type of a dotted eighth note. So yes. In that type of a context, but it's all bucket of fish. It's yep. all the same bucket of fish. Okay, so using that in that way is, is totally fine. Now, if maybe you're sitting there and you're like Stephen. Whoa, like we were talking earlier today, somebody was like, whenever I add that fourth limb, it's like, you know, a, a, a friend of mine, a great mentor, actually, a musical mentor of mine, he used to say when you have a problem and you're in music, he said you have to fix it immediately. He said it's almost like you're in a plane and then all of a sudden we're in the trees and you got to pull up like real quick. So if you're in a song and you realize like the foot ain't going to work, that ain't going to happen. We can do bucket of fish with just the hands, okay? So the bucket of fish with just the hands would be simply the last two notes on the floor, Tom. So... It's just right, left, right, left. Still just as effective. The, the effect is, is it's negligible, the difference. So don't feel like if you don't put your kick drum in there, it's not really a bucket of fish. It's still a bucket of fish. It's still the same still. thing. Still. Um, very cool. What man. number are we on now? We're almost at. We're almost at the yeah, end. We're getting, at number I'm nine. I'm so excited teaching through Phil's, bro. Fast, eh? I don't know where I am. Dude, um, you're taking control of this. You're so used to teaching on your own. I Literally, I, I'm just sitting here. I'm chatting with these guys. I'm showing them all, you know, Reddit <laughs> on the laptop. Have here. you seen this cat video? It's yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Have you seen this cat? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Sorry. Uh, so we're at number, we're at the last Phil. So number, uh, no, we're at 9A. The I lied to you. The douche gadouche. This is, somebody asked me why it's called the douche gadouche, and I said that's because that's that's what it sounds like. And so if I just go, it's floor tom, snare, snare, high tom. They're yeah. like, and they're trying to, and, but if I just go, it's douche gadouche gadouche. It's going to be straight 16th notes. It's one E and a two E and a th and this is one that I've used a lot. This is not like on Famous, I mean, it may be, who knows. But this is one that personally I've gone to just because it works. It works. So three and a four and a four. Now 
It's, it's the douche good douche. Now you can also make it into the six stroke roll. Okay. So we can put the diddle back in the middle in this one, just like we did before. And it's again, it's still the douche good douche. You're automatically what I call fancy. You're, you're automatically fancy. That's you get fancy. fancy. Anytime you put a roll in there, they're like, oh, wow, okay, well, that's fast. You know, so you can put the roll in there and it automatically kind of dress. It's like, it's like, you know, putting makeup on, you know, not that, I mean, not that I do that. How do you know my... that there, Steve? How do you know if it's like putting makeup on? Uh, <laughs> awkward silence. Uh, Next on Drumeo. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we can play it. One, two. So that's gonna be number nine. That's one that I've used a lot, 9A. Uh, and then 9B would be where I add the six stroke roll, which they just put up there. So, and then we're at the, we're at the, we've come to the end of the road. It's like the Boys to Men song that just flashed, although we've come to the end of. So and let's all, just, let's, let's, let's wrap this up here. You've talked about, got, got a pee. You talked about the <laughs> goosh de blush de. You've talked about um, putting on makeup, and now you're talking about uh, Boys to Men. What a lesson, man. Your references are spot on. <laughs> They're spot on. Spot on. I'm a 90s kid at heart, guys. I'm, I will always Boys be. to men. <laughs> a, B, C, D. I will, I will recite the whole album, guys. I'm not ashamed, so. <laughs> <laughs> Loud and proud, man. Yeah, man. Um, so number 10. Number 10 is going to mix a couple of them. And uh, and what did I title number 10 exactly? I don't I don't want to call it wrong. All right. You've, you've you made fun of my other names. You called number 10 the Pat Boone stutter. <laughs> It's the Pat Boone stutter because we basically say Pat Boone twice and then we do our pop country fill or the Debbie Boone part. We're just placing it how we did on the pop country fill. So it goes whiny and, these are all alternating 16th notes. We're gonna accent the one and the and of one. So if beat one is gonna go snare drum, snare drum, high tom, snare drum. Be sure and bring those accents out because that's what's gonna give your fills and really your playing in general life. Is when we add those things, we talked about it earlier, we were talking about it. When we add articulation, uh, which, is, which is a specific um, you know, temperature of a certain note, is it, is it staccato, is it slurred? Um, how is that note interpreted? We add dynamics, you know? It, th what we were talking about earlier with the, with the eighth note buildup. This is so much more musical. Just doing that, you're all of a sudden drawn into, the listener's drawn into what's going on because you're creating shapes within the music. Yep. So do that with, this, with these fills too. Don't just sit there and, and pound them out as hard as you can and you know, be the caveman drummer. We wanna we want really add some nuance to our playing. Now, beat two, we're gonna, we're gonna have um, the downbeat and then the E are gonna be unaccented on the snare drum. And then we're gonna go back into that six note rhythm and we're gonna play it again. Okay. So it's gonna go one E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E, and then and a. Uh. So four and uh, Excuse me, let me, let me get that in the right tempo. Four E and a. Uh, four E and a. Uh, and then at the end of it, we're gonna tag on the pop country fill. The reason I call it the Pat Boone stutter because it's Pat Boone, Pat Boone, a Debbie Boone. Ah, oh, gotcha. So that's gonna be 10 fills that we can pull out at any time. And, and use, if you need a song intro, if you're in a tight spot, or maybe you're a beginner and you're just wanting some fills that make you, sometimes uh, more, the biggest thing I do with drummers when they come in and they first start playing the drums is we have to see success immediately. So me and my, uh, I remember my first piano teacher. Man, the stuff we were working on was so boring. Like there was nothing interesting about what I was doing. And as a teacher, it's our job to make those first lessons memorable. We want them to be memorable because we want them to come back. It's like if I visit mm -hmm. a restaurant for the first time, they wanna make their best impression mm -hmm. because if they make that best first impression, I'm hooked. 
Yes. Like I've got restaurants that I will swear by and they can screw up my order every time I go in now and I'm like, oh man, bless their hearts. They're just, they're good people, man. They mean well, like <laughs> their service has gone down and I'm like, but that first time, like it was perfect. And that's what we wanna get with the drums. That's a way to get people hooked on something is to really let them enjoy that first time. So with the first lesson, I like to get them playing a groove. Mm -hmm. I like to get them playing a fill and these types of fills are very easy. And I wanna get them playing along to a song. Yes. You know, like superstition or something that's that's very uh, you know, Billy Jean's another yeah. one that a lot of beginners. Those are beats that are that are iconic, but all of a sudden they're playing music. So in their first lesson, we've accomplished so much, even if it's just a Pat Boone, Debbie Boone, because now they have a fill, and now they're a part of things. That's the language of drumming. So this is not just ten cliche fills. This is part of the language, and, and really, if you're a beginner, this is a great place to start, these types of fills, because they'll give you fills that you can do in, in a lot of contexts. So, Absolutely. Yeah, man, yeah. So Thanks for sharing that, man. Yeah, no problem. This guy knows how to teach. It's almost like you've been doing it for a few years. <laughs> one day, Dave, I think I might do it full-time, one yeah. day. I think <laughs> right. I'm almost ready to teach in front of people, you're real almost, live, actual people, <laughs> instead <there>. of just <laughs> camera. <laughs> well, I love it. and. Um, you guys, like I said, if you if you like his style of teaching, not only do we have him on Drummy all the time, but he's got his own site where he's on all the time. Only him, drum uh, yeah. Steve's Drum Shed, and um, follow him on Facebook and YouTube as and well. YouTube. The YouTube, the YouTube, Twit, Instagram, book, That's right. you know, all of that, everything. Um, How did you guys do? You just kind of took it all, took it all in, hey? Oh yeah, yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. And all these fills, because um, like you made them your own, you guys can make them your own too. You know, find the the main idea between Pat Boom and put in a, got a P in there too, and you're gonna, oh, sure, Pat Boone's got a P and something, it'll Definitely work out. Will. Yeah. yeah. Let's get to questions. We have a few that have come in, and um, then we're gonna get you to play us out with a solo. Is that yeah, cool? Sure, man, that's awesome. Love Happy it. to do it. All right, so this first one is from Carrillo Talvera. It says, what do you suggest to do, Stephen, when you play a gig on someone else's drum set, and like the drums are moving, shaking, or falling apart, and stuff like that? Like, What are some of the things that you do in a situation like that when it comes to um, gigging? That's a good question, um, and this is something that I, I had to make this decision years ago. Um, when I'm having a bad night, or, or when I'm on, like what you said, you know, and, and for instance in Nashville, if you play club dates in town, most of the clubs have a house kit, and that, those were, that's a very loosely used term. Um, <laughs> some of, it's like, no, you have tin cans. These are not drums, <laughs> yeah. these are. Um, and so going in, you never know what's gonna be, what you're gonna go into. So at that point, I'm going to reduce my drumming. I'm gonna have a reduction of my drumming. I'm not gonna go in to impress people. I'm gonna realize that on a professional level, like this is where we are. If I do the normal things I normally do, I'm not going to be able to pull them off because this drum set is giving me some issues. Mm -hmm. So things like this, fills that you know you can do in any situation, uh, grooves you know you can do in any situation. Uh, those are gonna be what's called my fallback. On the, other, on the other scheme of things, if I've been playing all day and my hands are burned down, or if, I mean, some days we just don't have it. Like some days you come in and you're like, I call myself a drummer, but I should probably just be doing something else because it's not gonna happen, <laughs> right? And at that point, you have to have the maturity to go, I'm just having a bad day. Yeah. Like it's, it's not me, it's not the drums, our relationship's still healthy, she still likes me, like totally fine, I just need to go sleep, you know? Mm -hmm. And so at that point, I'm gonna reduce my drumming. And so instead of playing this fancy stuff, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be doing this stuff. Things that I know I can do at any given time. So I'm gonna reduce my playing and assess the situation. At that point, if I feel like, okay, now, now I'm comfortable that every time I hit the kick drum, it walks across the floor and every you know two measures, I'm having to pull it back. Like at that point, once I'm comfortable there and I know my confines, then I can kind of begin to branch out from there. Gotcha. But you gotta get a solid base first. Great, great question. Yeah, great it was question. good. A little off topic, but it was a good question, especially how many gigs you've done. I would love to, he's done many house gigs. Lots of them. Yes. Uh, here's one from David Kwan. He says, hey, Stephen, thanks for all the lessons, man. You're very welcome. He says, is there a general rule of thumb as to when to use one, two, or four beat fills, or does it just vary depending on the song? Now, that is a good question for this lesson. It is a good question. Um, and yeah, it does vary depending on the songs. I tend to reserve longer fills for uh, bigger movements within the piece. 
Um, so if a fill is half, and this is all general knowledge, guys. If you're sitting there and you're playing straight ahead jazz gigs, if you're playing Latin, like if you're playing gigs that are obviously beyond the level of pop music, then some of these rules are gonna be broken, okay? They're not hard and tried and true rules, but once we're in the working world as a drummer or you're just wanting to get to where we can do things, the bigger the movement within the piece, the bigger I'm going to make that movement obvious on the drums. Yeah. So if I'm playing a verse, let's just say, talk about a, a leading fill, and I'm gonna play a fill in the middle of the verse. I'm not gonna do this. Because everybody listening goes, oh, that was supposed, you were supposed to go some, that's more like, Building tension. Music is nothing but tension and release. It's a constant series. We're either in the in the point of building tension, we're in the point of coming away from tension and getting ready to build that tension again. Mm -hmm. It's a constant thing of tension and release, okay? And so if we think in that way, I reserve my shorter fills for when, if it's a faster song, sometimes I'll do shorter fills, or if I'm just staying in the same section, I will do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then, and you, your fills don't always have to build. Sometimes your fills can come down. Okay, so sometimes you're at a loud section. So at that point, that's still a leading fill, but I'm allowing more space at the end of it. It's still a four beat fill, but I'm allowing space at the end of it, which settles me into, we're bringing the volume down. So I'm releasing that tension at the beginning of the fill, and then we settle back in and we're gonna build that tension again. So it's a very good question, but I, reserve, I would reserve the longer the fill for big movements within the, within, the, within the piece of music. Very cool, this one's from Clayton Slammons. He says, hey, love these fills, man. Now what's the best way to practice them? He asks, would you suggest playing them over and over or what, what was your, would be your approach? Sure, sure. So I would make, and we talked about this earlier, I would make a short assembly line with what I was doing with this. So I would, first of all, have a basic beat that I was gonna go to and learn these two, okay? I'm gonna ignore the beat first. If I'm learning Pat Boone, Debbie Boone, I'm gonna do it over and over like this until I get it. So it's gonna go like this. One, two. Over and over and over until I've encoded that into my brain. And I talked about this earlier. Our brains encode success and defeat the same way. So if we play it correctly one time and we play it wrong one time, we're still at zero. We're still at base level. So we need to do it correctly over and over and over and get it into our muscle memory. Now once I have that down, I'm not gonna go. That's gonna be my first step. Step two, I'm gonna now add a crash symbol. So it's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four. over and over and over until I get that. Why am I only adding a crash? All too often if we add the crash going into the groove, we have problems with the transition into the groove. Mm -hmm. But we have, if we isolate that, then the problem wasn't the crash, the problem wasn't the groove, it was the transition. So if we isolate that, now I'm ready to add it to a groove. This is gonna be my groove, simple, easy. So now I'm gonna practice in four bar phrases. Why four bars? I get that all the time, because it's music. And music usually happens in phrases like four bars, the blues. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at a common formats for jazz songs, if you look at popular music, there, and yes, there are exceptions. There's people, they're like, ah, oh, I know an exception, and they'll type, it's cool. There are lots of exceptions. It's music, it's creativity. But in general, they're going to be, they're going to be uh, in very organized formats. So your verse is gonna be eight bars, or it's gonna be 16 bars, or 12 bars. So a lot of times we'll, we'll have divis divisions of four. And so I'm gonna practice that way. I'm gonna do three bars of groove, and then the fill crash back into the groove. So it'll sound like this. One, two. And at that point, that's going to be, we had step one was learning the fill, step two was learning the fill with a crash, step three is adding the groove, and if adding the groove with the crash is too much, eliminate the crash symbol. Mm -hmm. And all we'll do is the Pat Boone, Debbie Boom.
We need to always reduce. If we're having problems with something, make it simpler, make it slower, and then when we get it, then we can speed it up. So, great question. Yeah, Excellent solid question. answer too. Couple really quick ones that we'll get to, and then we're gonna get to, to a solo, and um, time is of the essence, it's 4.55. Mm -hmm. We still got VIP stuff to do after this. Yes. Um, so my apologies for those who didn't get their questions answered, but if you are watching this and you were maybe watching it on Facebook Live or on um, Drumio Live, or if you're watching it on YouTube too, and you do have questions for it, you gotta come to drumio.com. We're live every day. Steven's live a couple times. Uh, well, he's got 100, over 100 lessons, I would say, or close on to. On our side, yeah. On our site. Yeah. Um, uh, and we have other instructors as well. You get all your questions answered throughout the week. But on the Monday lessons, because we are always throw these ones either on YouTube, and there's a lot of people at them because they're public, we can't get to all the questions. But you will get your question answered on Drumio uh, for sure. Here's one quickly from, uh, oh, I just lost it here. Here it is, from No Name. He says, can I watch this video after the live stream? It's 1.40 a.m. in Europe, and I really want to catch all that I can. <laughs> um, thanks uh, from Slovenia. He, Kudos he, to you for staying up to you know, view this ugly bunch of guys. Uh, right? I mean, I'll let you. Look at us. I, I mean, I think this group. section of the room is really stellar looking, you know? <laughs> it, it, it wanes as Dude, we go. Dude, you're the one with the nice button up shirt. You're making us look bad. Here. You know what? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's the look. That's that's Magnum, right? The that's new Magnum. Look. That's, that's, the my, new look. that's my blue steel. Blue the other steel, side. yeah. Magnum's just... the other side. Um, to answer your question, yes, we're gonna upload this one to YouTube. But um, all of the lessons that we do on Drumio every day, we're live one hour every day. Uh, goes on the library, goes into the library. So we've got over 1,300 previous live lessons in there. You can check out, and um, this one will be in there uh, very shortly after this. So check it out if you can. Um, question. This one's from uh, Bonzi. No. Bonzi, this one says, did you say you use Tama? Yes, this is a Tama kit. You recently just this is um, a Tama. Yeah, actually this this is the actually this is the first time I have mentioned it in a public format. Um, uh, I went to I, I got to meet. Uh, they came and did a Nashville hang, just kind of low key leaked it out to a few people and um, one of their artists invited me and, and they're just really good people and the products that they were coming out with are really uh, I liked a lot of them. I liked the sounds that they had and more importantly the people were just really uh, Aaron and the crew, they just really uh, bent over backwards just to, you know, they just were interested in being a part of the community. And that's really, I mean, doing this online thing, we talk about that constantly. Yeah. It's community and it's building community and it's not my site versus their site versus their YouTube. It's mm -hmm. not that at all. It, we're all drummers and we all learn a different way. And so there's lots of options. And so I'm the same way with gear, you know. And yeah, this is a, this is a Tam Star Classic. And um, it's red, obviously. <laughs> it's very red. <laughs> uh, matches my shirt, I think. Yeah, right. You know? I you think got, it's accents, it does, actually. You know? yeah. See, I plan you all You dressed this. appropriately. I, I plan it all day. I didn't even tell you it was going to be red. It's that meta level. Yeah, the meta <laughs> level. Here's a question for you, Bob. Wendy, uh, too, says, hey, guys, I'm, reti I'm a retired drummer. Where can I get a T-shirt like the gentleman on your left? I was looking at uh, Paul here. I'm like, no, it can't be social distortion. It's got to be this one. What does it say? I have a retirement plan. I plan on playing the drums. Yes. That's that was perfect. online. Perfect shirt. You just type in drum shirts? No, it, it's, uh, God, it's one of the, the ones I get on Facebook all the time. Oh, that keeps popping ads. up there? Yeah. yeah. Just search for it, Wendy. Yeah. Yeah, that's if great. If I can find it, I'll post it in the forums. Good for you. Yeah, and if you're, if you're at a later stage in life, we're not saying old, because that is, you know, 40, 50, 60. We never said old, we said retired, buddy. Uh, I know. You're the one that's- Well, that was, I was being very PC. <laughs> I'm not saying old. Um, there's so many of my students that are in that stage of life and they're enjoying themselves more than they ever have. Yeah. Because they have the time, they have the expendable resources, the kids are gone. So if you're starting late in life, don't think that no it's too late. Yeah. It's never too late, man. There's, you, you can always learn, you can always do this as a hobby. There's always new things. You're not too old to learn something new. You know, so. Speaking of that, we just had our oldest student come out to, really? it was Benny Greb's um, master session, 73. And he came out and he killed it. He just had a great time. Man, I'm, I'm gonna be rocking when I'm 73. I know, I better be. Yeah. yeah. You're still you gonna be hosting these lessons? I still, I'll, I'll probably still be here. <laughs> Dave will be here. have the big old beard. <laughs> Welcome back to Drummy. I don't have an even worse attitude. <laughs> Rhythm 45. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any questions before we wrap up? We covered it already. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we've been with them all day, so. 
Yeah, we're gonna get a lot more. <laughs> yeah, I like that answer. We've been with him all day. It's like, <laughs> nothing else I can ask him. Knowing know me is like cat years. It's like for every day you know me, it's like seven days. It's like, <laughs> oh, jeez, I've known Stephen forever. It's, Feels like it's, it's been, been fifty three, years. Been but... three hours actually. <laughs> all right, you get to play us out with the solo, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, I think so. I we're think gonna so. leave. I'm gonna leave. That is, you guys can stay here if you want, but I'm gonna leave because I don't want to be in the shot sure. for the solo. Because if this is great, <laughs> then you got me in there. So. <laughs> So I'll see you guys later. Steven, hey, thanks for coming out oh, to our man, Thanks for having me. Studio. Yeah, it's great. Awesome.